This video series presents 15 lessons that may help you to prepare messages, lessons or discussion guides on 1 John for your pastoral, teaching or small group ministry. In this introduction you will find a brief description of the 15 lessons, who was John, date and purpose of 1 John, the importance of 1 John, philosophies that may lead Christians astray, an analytical outline of its contents, Greek manuscripts of 1 John, and advice for teachers and group leaders, a description of the 15 lessons. These 15 lessons are intended for those who teach others. Each lesson or module will provide you with the following kinds of material. 1. The Greek text for the module. 2. Greek manuscript variants. 3. The English Standard Version. 4. An analytical outline of the text. 5. Historical background facts. 6. Comments on various interpretations. 7. Word definitions from Bauer's lexicon. 8. Parallel text in John's Gospel. 9. Culturally sensitive applications. And 10. Replies to your queries. The modules will not try to promote the following. Rationalistic speculation, also called higher criticism. A particular systematic theology, Arminian, Calvinist, Reformed, and so forth. Denominational interpretations, Adventist, Baptist, Catholic, Lutheran, Pentecostal, and so forth, nor arguments for a preferred Bible translation. That said, the author admits to subscribing to the Evangelical World Alliance Statement of Faith. You may obtain notes on this introduction and on each lesson from our download site at onejohn.curach.com dot download. Who was John? John was son of Zebedee, who was a Judean Jew, a fisherman by trade, and of his wife Salome, a relative of Jesus' mother Mary. Nearly all tradition and historical inquiry affirm that John was one of Jesus' twelve disciples. For example, Polycarp, who lived from year 69 into the second century, a Christian bishop of Smyrna, who had been a disciple of John, cited 1 John chapter 4 when he wrote, quote, Everyone who does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is an antichrist. End of quote. Thus John was an ear and eye witness to Jesus' travels, teaching, discourses, deeds, death, and resurrection. John was the author of the Gospel of John, in which he recounts several of Jesus' discourses that are not reported elsewhere. Late in his life, John became a leader of churches at Ephesus and Asia Minor, where he penned this epistle. John lived to about age 90 years, dying around the year 100 CE. Near the end of the first century, the Christians of Asia Minor were in their second and third generations, and the population had become tolerant of their new religion. Thus their main opposition came not from persecution, but from the appeal of Greek philosophy and the allure of Roman wealth. 
John probably wrote this epistle near the year 100 to steer young generations of Christians towards the original good news about Jesus whilst affirming his love for them. He states the aims of his epistle as being to gain full joy, to urge them not to sin, to remind Christians of their spiritual advantages, to warn them about deceivers, and to assure them that they have eternal life. Thus this book stands as an authentic document written by one of Jesus' apostles. As such, it provides Christians everywhere with the basic principles by which to lead their life correctly. It tells us the main teachings that the apostles taught to early Christians. It shows how to practice Christian faith, hope, love, and obedience. It makes a very clear distinction between truth and error, and it explains the promises that God has made to Christians. Thus the epistle helps to strengthen new Christians and to teach new churches, bringing erring Christians back to true faith and love. In the first and second centuries, the Christian movement was often challenged by a philosophy called Gnosticism, which taught that all matter is evil and that the spirit realm is good. And secondly, God remains unknowable, but there are lesser spirit beings called aeons. Thirdly, the material world was created by an inferior spirit called a demiurge. Four, humans do not have to deal with sin, only with ignorance. And fifthly, to achieve salvation, one needs knowledge, gnosis. Other current philosophies included Stoicism, which taught that everything is God and that humans should live free of passion, joy, and grief by keeping rigid rules of self-discipline. Epicureanism, which believed in many gods, but degenerated into seeking pleasure over truth. And Doceticism, which taught that Jesus was a human being and that Christ was a divine spirit. 1 John teaches Christians how to believe and how to live in the way that Jesus lived and taught. It is generally acknowledged that 1 John does not present a formal, logical argument comparable to Paul's epistle to the Romans, but it does have a recognizable structure. Using the methods of discourse analysis, observing clusters of vocabulary words, recurring phrases, themes, and topics, we suggest four divisions of the book, which are further divided into 15 sections, each section easily breaking down into three main points. Please download our outline of 1 John from the download site. Bible translators translate 1 John from ancient Greek manuscripts, that is, handwritten copies. The oldest Greek manuscript of 1 John, called Papyrus 9, dates from the 3rd century. Two manuscripts date from the 4th century, three others from the 5th century, and 23 more date from the 7th century and later. Through the centuries, scribes and copyists sometimes tried to make slight improvements. To obtain a list of these textual variants, 
go to the download site. If you preach sermons on 1 John, then try to follow the outline from these videos using your own words. Teach all the doctrines from the lesson, illustrating them with little stories. Preach in your usual manner, but have the congregation form little groups and pray for one another. If you teach the book to a large group, then allow someone else to read aloud from 1 John. Invite everyone to pose queries, allowing others to reply to those queries before you give your own answer. Tell everything from the lesson and share your own insights. Allow time for learners to discuss how to apply the lesson and to pray one for another. If you lead a small group or house church, then have others read aloud from 1 John, inviting everyone to tell what they have learned from the reading. Invite queries about the lesson's verses and let everyone discuss the verses and, and how they will apply John's teaching in their daily life. Finally, share your own insights and understanding.